Welcome to eClinical Works Podcast. I'm your host, Marzia Fatima. On today's episode, we will be talking about eClinical Works Business Optimizer, or as we like to call it, EBO reports. And we want to talk about how this tool can help you achieve success. Here with me today on this podcast, today we have Eric Pimperin from Indiana Health Centers. Eric, thank you for joining the podcast today. Yeah, you're welcome. Please tell me a little bit about yourself and um, your history with eClinical Works and EBO reports. Uh, currently, I'm at Indiana Health Centers. I've been here for about two years. Uh, we're a federally qualified health center. We have about 70 providers, and we have 10 sites that are spread throughout the state of Indiana. Wow, that's great. So let's talk about EBO reports. There's so much data in the system, and it's important that you know how to read all of this data and that it not only makes sense to us, but it also helps us identify the gaps and areas of improvement. What drove you and your practice to explore what EBO has to offer? At my prior organization, we had just gone live with ECW, and I had gone through a webinar that was how to use Query Studio as we were trying to learn how to use ECW in general overall. From there, it started where I was able to start looking for where we were having issues in the system where we could pull all the unlocked notes, and instead of each provider having to go look for it, we could show it to them rather than them going to look for it. Because what we found is that when you tell somebody to go look for a problem and they're responsible for looking for themselves, they sometimes don't look. And that was a way that we could kind of take care and make sure that somebody was looking over their shoulder. Are they doing everything they needed to? And kind of from there, it snowballed into other things and, hey, we can get this. Now we need to see this. Oh, can we also get this? So by the time that they had decided that they needed a position, a full-time data analyst, I stepped into that role. Within a year, the they were saying that we need another one to help you. And by the time that I was leaving, we had a total of the data analyst manager and two people who were basically building reports full-time. Oh, that's amazing. So when you started using ECW, that's how you started exploring EBO reports when you needed some data. Would you say that anyone who's using eClinical Works today can learn how to use the canned reports as well as create these custom reports? Or do you think the user need any prior expertise in, um, to explore this area? I don't think a prior experience is needed to run the canned reports. You click on a link, you answer some questions, and then you get the data that eClinical Works has already built in, in for us. Where you need the specialized history is where you, when you start building custom reports, you can just drag and drop items into that custom report or into that canned report, making it a custom report, or you can start out from scratch building a custom report from nothing and building it exactly what you need it to be. That's amazing. Would you please refer to some of the reports that your practice is currently utilizing and how they've helped you in automating some of the manual work that you were doing and how it has impacted the bottom line? In my current role, I'm also a system administrator, so I make mistakes when I set people up. So I have a report that tells me when those mistakes happen. Did we forget to add a DEA number? Is somebody's DEA number is expiring? because we have to go change that expiration date or else they can't send any e-prescriptions. I built that so that then we can identify those problems before they really become an issue. And I'm not one who likes to sit and do repetitive things overall. When we were also seeing our immunization with our state immunization registry, we were finding that ECW says that we need to go check the immunization dashboard every day. And since we send so many of them, we were having to check page after page after page. I don't like doing that. I don't like having to check page after page. So I found a way to have a report tell me how many were successful, how many failed, what was there. And so that has helped save some time for me. Additionally, some of the other ones that we that have built is we had a well child check campaign. So we set up a helo campaign that would reach out to patients when they were overdue for a well child check. And we would remind them about their well child check. But since it was a campaign, we also had some questions about, are these patients actually coming in? Is the campaign worth it? Are we seeing a return of of our investment on those campaigns? And so with that, we took another step and said, did these patient actually end up making the appointment? So after we kind of started with those, we saw some of our campaigns weren't nearly as successful as we thought they were. So then we reevaluated, do we need to keep them on? Do we need to turn them off? Do we need to tweak them? How can we change them? So we can still continue to see those patients coming in. And then recently we had an audit for our PCMH certification. There was a binding on there. And so we ended up, we were able to build a report that says, hey, we're supposed to be doing this. We're not documenting it in the same place. 
So now we have a report that's looking at that and that's being sent to the higher ups to make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Wow, these are some amazing reports, Eric. Thank you so much for sharing these. So I understand that you're, you're a super user for EV reporting tools. What would you recommend or suggest other ECW practices as their first step to achieve achieving success using EV reports? I would think that having somebody that can focus on the data, who understands both the process and the workflows of the organization and understands how to use EVO is very helpful. For me, I'm a very detail-oriented, so I, it helps me understand the end result of the report. From the perspective of, of just what you can do with EVO is immense. You can do almost anything you can think of. If somebody says, hey, can we do that? Almost always the answer is yes, but I need enough time. The way that I've always kind of described of using EBO is way back in the paper world, you took all your paper charts, put them in a pile. That's what you do with you when you get the electronic medical record system. The benefit that you see out of the EMR is when you start having somebody who can pick through that data and mine it and say, okay, here's the list of patients you need to call. Here's the list of patients you need to call. Here's the patients who we need to reach out to, or here's the stuff we're not doing correctly. Because that to me is where you really see a lot of the benefit of the EMR is when you can reduce some of the manual work that you're having to do by looking at the data that you have. Thank you, Eric. It was a pleasure. And thank you for sharing such insightful information. Don't forget to like our video and watch other podcasts on Spotify, Amazon Music, iTunes, YouTube, and eClinicalWorks.com. From eClinicalWorks podcast team, this is Marzia Fatima. Thank you for watching.